but hey, maybe we can talk a little bit about the book, and uh, that's that's probably why people are here, not just get the free book. Or, um, and I think I think uh, IBM is sponsoring this event, um, and it's right. uh, and they've been pretty generous in the number of books. I've heard about like two million they bought, so just yeah, yeah. So I can actually make the the New York bestseller list. Yes, uh, let's do it. Let's do hey. it, everybody. Fill out that form. <laughs> so, so and and. Um, no, it's it's actually well, it's it's a it's a book about uh, Apache Apache Spark, and it covers up to Apache Spark three, which is kind of a recent release. It was released um, in 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 June, um, and the book was released in June. Um, and um, I've wrote this book uh, because I didn't like what. Um, what I found as books for for Apache Spark. Um, it's not like a, a. I'm just making some kind of a you know toddler tantrum, saying uh, I didn't find a book, so I'm going to spend three years of my life writing one, right? Um, because that's the time it took. Um, oh my goodness! Yeah. So 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 when you're thinking about ha about you know downloading a free copy you, you found somewhere on the internet, think that the offer was even if you pay it, I get something like the equivalent of. A coffee, uh, so so yeah, so so just 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 keep buying them, and even if you don't, <laughs> if, if, even if you don't buy it, go to Amazon and put five stars. Okay, that's that's, that's always very useful. Well, so so but, to give to give a little bit of background on you, so you've been an IBM champion for. A, like a dozen years or something like yeah, this? Yeah, 12 years, yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you, sir. <laughs> and you've also, you have you actually have a, a long background in IT, right? Like over two decades in IT, not just Spark. Yeah, so I started my career about 25 years ago. Um, I, I like... I like to say that I started even earlier when I was 12 um, with with my Atari 800 Excel. So I don't know if anyone in the audience knows what an Atari 800 Excel is. That seems like I'm really getting really super old. Um, but um, but anyway, so so I started I started a long time ago, and I started making money in the mid 90s out of out of my work. And um, funny thing is about and going back to the book is. I've I've always been in some relationship with with data. Uh, um, my first my first experience was I was working for a company that was making um, compilers for GL compilers specifically for I, for Informix. At that time, Informix was a, stand, a separate company, and now it's an IBM company. Um, and so it's data. It was tools, development tools around data. Um, later, I created my first company where we decided to build a, uh, a Java framework. And then I decided to create another company where we did uh, marketing analysis. And, uh, and that's where I did big data without even knowing I was doing big data. Um, because everybody was saying, "Hey, if you do big data, what you're actually doing is you've got to use Hadoop." Uh, and 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 so, so I was I was actually not using Hadoop. I was I was I was this kind of weird guy saying, "Well, I was using Elasticsearch back in the time. It was 0 0.7, 0 0.8, and before that we had Lucene, Solar. We were doing mm -hmm. a lot of text analysis, and and we were using um, Informix as well to." to actually all the extracted data we got from 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 our text analysis we would store them into into in a synthetic form in, in informix but that, that was that was big data uh, and but the, but the people were saying Hadoop is big data. So I've never learned Hadoop because I'd never trusted, never, <laughs> never, never liked it. And but, but, but we should say, you know, although you're, you're not a huge Hadoop fan, you do have this, this long background in data engineering, data governance, uh, even data science. Um, but, but it doesn't make me love Hadoop, right? <laughs> <laughs> We're getting we're getting all the secrets out, even though we are recording. <laughs> so no, but it's it's the, the thing is I first so first I, I don't like I do, but there's there's a there's a reason for why. The thing is, as a good friend of mine um, left IBM and shame on him and and he and he went to work for this at that time it was almost a startup it was a 
called Cloudera, I think, or something like that. <laughs> um, and 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 we keep in touch. And once and and we went to a conference together. And while well, we met at a conference, and he was telling me, "Hey, you've got to investigate this Hadoop thing." I said, "Okay, well, yeah, why not? What what kind of hardware can I run it? Oh, you need at least it's all commodity hardware." And that was like twenty mm, ten ish. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, commodity hardware. I said, okay, okay, so I can I can run it on my laptop. At that time, my laptop was probably something like a 16 gig laptop, you know, probably not an SSD, but so that was that was commodity hardware. I said, oh, no, 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 you can't. You need at least 96 gig of memory. You need, um, you need SSD, you need, but that's not the definition of commodity hardware for me, okay? So that's, that's how I pushed it a little bit aside. Um, and in 2015, I, I discovered Spark um, and, uh, and, and that was, that was using commodity hardware. Okay, um, I'm I'm giving three sessions this afternoon. We are doing I'm doing one with my boss at two p.m. on uh, um, and advanced auto parts is uh, and uh, we're going to do something with open source and we're going to announce that it's related to Spark. It all works on my laptop, which is just sitting here. Okay, so so and that's that's something I really liked about about Spark. You can you can do anything you want with Spark, um, and uh, and it it actually it actually works great, uh, and and that's that was one of the reasons why I wrote the book as well. The um, uh, when you know people were saying big data is Hadoop. And and I said, well, yeah, big data might be Hadoop, but the thing is, it's more interesting to, if you you can do big data with with Spark, okay? Well, and actually, this, uh, I, I feel like yeah. uh, sorry to interrupt, but I no, just no, no, go ahead. To, I wanted to mention to the audience if you do have questions for Jean Georges oh, yeah, about mm -hmm. about Spark, about you know, sort of like uh, data models, data science. Um, all, all the history, even even sort of like the differences between Spark and Hadoop and why you would choose one over the other, please feel free to post them in the chat. I think this session is going to be by definition more interactive than the sessions that you're giving later today. Um, and so as long as it's not, you know, a bunch of proprietary information or very specific to your implementation, I'm sure that, uh, that those questions, you know, that, that would be something that we'd love to talk about. Um, yeah, but yeah, like I, I'm kind of curious, you know, what what was it about and i think you were getting into this what was it about spark originally that that made you so drawn to it as opposed to hadoop so so first thing is i think it was it was first um you, you could you can use it on on really commodity hardware okay so so you can you can get your 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 peak at big data on on your laptop okay uh, on on any laptop even the first very crappy laptop that <laughs> Now we've got a nice one, but that was the very first crappy laptop I got from <laughs> Advanced Auto Parts, and it, it, but it still run it on this one. But uh, but anyway, um, yeah, because of COVID, I still keep it. They don't want it. Back. <laughs> they don't want it back. <laughs> <laughs> so Fair. But uh, anyway, so so yeah, so so that's that was one of the reasons. Um, Another reason was that well, it was it was a lot easier. The learning curve is for me, I think, is really easier. You don't have to you don't have to learn uh, complex algorithms like MapReduce. You can still do MapReduce because that's under the, under the under the scene. That's what's going to happen anyway. But you don't have to learn how it works. Okay, um, and uh, um, so that's 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 a second thing. And and you can use it you can use it very easily either as you submit application, like in a kind of a batch mode, or in an almost interactive way where you leverage, um, you leverage your um, uh, a cluster like you were talking to a database almost. So, right. so, so, so I think that, that makes it a very friendly ecosystem for, um, for, um, for the developers and, and, for, and for the data engineers that wants to, to process data. So, so that, that, that was really the thing is, when I discovered this, I said, okay, that's, that's, that's a way to go versus trying to learn Hadoop. And, um, and, 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 and it's not that Hadoop is, is bad, it, it's more like Hadoop has been there for a while. I think it was the first experiment, I would say, in, in, in maturing, uh, in, in discovering, you know, building something around big data, having, having a platform around big data. And, um, 
and I think just Spark just just went after that and 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 was a little bit more successful. So, I've, so that's, I've definitely heard that you know that that Spark is is much more accessible if you're coming from a developer background. Yeah, um, and I I you know was a developer, uh, Java and JavaScript developer before, so it definitely appeals to me. Um, would you say and and I don't know if this is a question that you're prepared to answer, but would you say that also it, it has something to do with the workloads that you're that you're doing, like Spark is more accessible to certain workloads and Hadoop is more accessible to others? Yeah, we, we can say that in, in, in the ways that um, if you're a data scientist, you're, you're probably going to use things like Jupyter as a notebook or Zeppelin, okay? And, and, and those allow this very interactive workload, okay? I'm loading something, then I'm starting to, to modify them, and et cetera, I'm applying my transformation, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and, and this is something that you can do pretty easily with um, uh, with Spark as a backend for your uh, for Jupyter, mm -hmm. but it's not something you could be doing with with um, or not easily, I guess, uh, with with uh, with Hadoop. Hadoop. Yeah. yeah. So 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 coming back coming back to the book, the thing is, a lot of the book at the time when I started writing it, like so, okay, so I started like twenty seventeen ish. Um, and um, and uh, and and I think I had the idea, like yeah, maybe yeah, twenty seventeen, early twenty seventeen. And, and the thing is, really, all the books at that time were covering Spark from assuming that you knew Hadoop. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you know Hadoop. Uh, now it's it's time to uh, to boost your skills to to Spark, something like that. It was never assuming that. Well, you don't know anything about Hadoop, uh, and then you can do it. And a lot of these books as well were assuming that you were a Scala programmer. Okay, and 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 I and I and I'm not a Scala programmer. And <laughs> and the thing is, I'm a Java guy, and I love Java. And I think I think that I don't see any value <laughs> in Scala. So, so I see value in Python. I see value in Java. I don't see any in Scala, and 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 see, that's going to make me a lot of friends by saying that. But 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 uh, you know, if it's not a, if we're not in a bar, we don't have access to bars anymore. So that's the closest we have to a bar and a bar discussion. But um, but anyway, so so the thing is, if you wanted basically, like three years ago, uh, and maybe even more more recently, if you wanted to learn. Spark, you had to learn Hadoop, and you had to learn Spark. Yes, uh, Scala. So that's that's the idea. You don't have to. You, you you're coming in with your um, junior year of um, uh, college degree, college uh, college studies. You know you know Java. You know a bit of SQL, uh, and and then you can learn you can learn Spark. That's 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 one of the idea. And Spark also excels in in like you know really fast in memory compute. Um, yeah. So so that that was also that was also something with 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 Hadoop. I mean Hadoop has been designed to work very closely with disk, um, and they had even to extend. You know, and, and it's the thing is it's also you you cre they had to create extensions to 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 uh, to Hadoop uh, like HDFS for example, which is a Hadoop file system, um, because to leverage this distributed compute computing, you and and you had to be able to have distributed distributed data and to have distributed data well there was not really well there was some there was already some kind of a like zfs and, and, and other file systems that were distributed but they they went for hgfs and make it open source which, which was a great idea i'm not you know the thing but it adds another level of complexity you keep adding 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 to to, to get to something that to make to make your workload work, um, so 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 Spark, uh, uh, of course, can read data from HDFS or IBM Cloud or S3 or whatever, um, and and or any database and can write it thereafter as well. So, um, but the processing itself is not going to be based on the disk, but it's going to be on memory. Mm -hmm. um, 
and and that's 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 also that's a pretty impressive thing and so so people say yeah okay well then you need a lot of memory and and the thing is yes you need a lot of memory but it's a lot cheaper now than it used to be when hadoop was designed that's also you know that's that's a that's that's also a fair point for them okay and i'm not trying to completely badmouth them um so so now now you can have we can have uh my i've got a laptop uh i've got um, and i made some benchmark on a laptop i've got a 64 gig laptop okay um i got uh this is this is this is this is easy you you can have machines in the cloud with 256 gig of memory without you know without having to mortgage your taking a second mortgage on your house um so so it's 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 memory is is more, a lot more accessible and as spark is distributed it distributes the workload so it's a memory of all the executors that is going to to be used okay so if you've got um if i'm not mistaken one of um, the use case uh, i was i was exposed i didn't participate but i i i talked with the people uh it was for cern in in, in geneva and they uh, they have something like 200,000 nodes okay so even if you've got 32 gig uh on each on each node that's a lot of memory you can you can dedicate to your workload mm -hmm. um and 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 that's where memory memory is great and even if your data is not so and, and, and another thing is that when spark is loading loading the data it's compressing it okay so 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 it's in memory compression so and it's not it's not impacting the performance it's uh, um so if you had one gig one gig of data typically when it's in spark it's only going to use something like 800 mega of memory so you've got a kind of a 20 percent uh benefits there then um so that's one thing, and and if you don't have any if you don't have memory enough memory anymore, then it's it can spit out on disk, okay, and and you can have disks basically or you know SSD or NVMe those days, so they they can be pretty fast as well for for for, for that which can kind of pretty close to memory almost, um, so so yeah, you are aware, you know, hardware is is useful, but it's um it's uh it's uh um it, it, it's it's making it use very smart use of 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 your of your hardware whatever that's, your hardware is that's interesting as the hardware trends have changed over time spark has kind of become more valuable based on its based on its uh memory architecture um and actually we were talking previously about sort of approaching spark from the perspective of a developer and uh, garish actually asked a question. Um, he says, I used to, I used a little bit of Spark before. It had a huge learning curve for him specifically as a Java developer with a background in ETL. Uh, and he's wondering, did you have a similar experience and will your book help with that? So uh, another another opportunity to talk about your book. <laughs> okay, Garish, you get your 15 bucks after. So, yeah, I, I, I send it to you. Yeah, well, Garish, the thing is, yeah, the, the, um, you're right. As a, there's, there's a bit of a learning curve. I don't know where you're starting from, uh, a lot, and especially when you're a Java developer. I had I'm I'm I was probably in the same situation you are in. Um, l learning Spark when I started was very difficult. There was n almost no Java resources. Okay, you you find some Java resources on their website, which is kind of a really reference thing, but you didn't you didn't find a lot of things, and and everything was Scala, and, and, and Scala is really hard, um, or, or or you find example in Python. So so I went that, and and really this is really Girish, this is really why I wrote the book. Okay, for for people like you, uh, so. Um, uh, it's about using Java. The, the books, the, so the book, the, the, all the code is in a repo. So you don't have to, you don't have to buy the book to get to the repo. Um, it's open source. Um, and, and, uh, and you can get the, you can get the, it's on, um, uh, it's, it's on GitHub under JG Perrin and, you, and you'll find everything. So yeah, my, my Twitter handle is JG Perrin, my, my GitHub handle is JG Perrin. When you've got an odd name like mine, it's easy to have always the same kind of consistency everywhere. Um, but anyway, so, so, um, so the, the, all the examples described in the book, explained in the book are Java examples. 
uh, so it's really it's all really for the Java developer. Uh, what Manning decided is that we also wanted to give the same examples as you would do that in Python or in Scala, and that's in the repo, only in the repo, not in the book. We are thinking about doing it in the repo in the book, but that's already a 600-page book, so you can imagine that if you had two, and why not R as well? You know, so so it would it would have been like a pretty big book. So it's already a pretty big book. So yeah. I hope I answered your question, Girish. Awesome. Thank you for the question, Girish. And by the way, if anybody else has specific questions, feel free to ask. Um, there's a Q&A uh, area of Zoom, or you could also ask in the chat. And your questions do not have to reference the book, <laughs> although it is a bonus if they do. <laughs> Yeah, you get you get 15 bucks but th next time it's 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 not me anymore paying so it's <laughs> Todd, is, Todd is going to send you 15 bucks um I'm kind of curious actually from the so you know spark being an open source project mm -hmm. but also being just like very popular have you seen a a difference in adoption between uh startups and enterprise are there particular kinds of companies that spark appeals to more so before joining Advanced Auto Parts, um, I've been there for a year now. Um, before that, I was a consultant. So I've, I, I went to quite a few companies around. And it, it's pretty amazing that whatever kind of company, Spark was at least known. And uh, a, lot of, a lot of people were uh, considering it or looking at it. So it, it is really super popular. Spark version three this year 10 years old or so okay so so it's not like it's a it's a just a product that just popped up out of nowhere um <coughs> the um, the use case differ based on the companies so um I, i've seen a lot of and we're using a lot of sort of parts without releasing any big secret we're using spark a lot um with with data scientists um We've got a we've got a, a pretty big team of data scientists, and uh, they uh, they use they use Spark extensively with 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 notebooks, um, and, and that's a use case that Databricks, one of the company behind Spark, is uh, was pushing um, IBM too with with Watson Studio, uh, and and it's uh, it's I would say it's a it's a very traditional, very easy to go to use case. Okay, you 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 get to it very 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 easily. I think setting up Spark on with with, with uh, Jupyter on, on a laptop is is a bit of a mess. Uh, I, but the, the value of offerings like uh, Watson Studio or Databricks, or I think there's something also in the AWS space over there, uh, but 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 um, uh, having 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 this offering is is simplifies a lot the 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 adoption for data scientists. Okay, you, you spin up your your, your cluster, um, you st you start you start playing with your with your data and your and your data science experiments, and and, and that's that's go that's going very quickly. That's and that's a use case I've seen with with large companies. Uh, um, a use case I've seen with smaller companies is more like an ETL and data engineering uh, um, and data engineering um, people, less than the data science. Uh, so so I think that's also and it's also something which is interesting because if you if you looked well I've been I've been into it for for maybe too long probably now, uh, <laughs> but but the thing is. If you look at the history of what Databricks has been doing, they only recently started to address the data engineering uh, people with, with 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 tools dedicated with data engineering, uh, to, uh, and, and that's that's something where I don't think IBM has went went into this uh, in this direction. Um, and uh, so that's 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 a, the kind of thing. It's, it's always you know when we're talking data, there's always this dichotomy between data engineers and data scientists, and and sometimes the the, the, the frontier or, or you know the, the zone in between um, is a bit fuzzy. And Spark is really in the middle of that for sure. And that's actually one of the I've got a very nice Venn diagram in my talk this afternoon where I, well. The spoiler uh, where I put Spark in the middle, um, but uh, yeah, that's so. So so, 
you can see both. Um, and the tool, something something we're going to talk at at, at two p.m. Is, is using Spark uh, as um, uh, in in the ETL slash uh, data engineering space, which it's brilliant for for using it as well. So. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. Are there any use cases, you know, because as you mentioned, Spark has been around for a while now. Um, you know, old people like me think, oh, you know, it's this it's this hot new thing. Um, are there any use cases that you've seen of Spark where you were surprised or thought, you know, oh, that, that wasn't an application that I would have considered when I first saw the open source project? Um, yeah, but, but I was impressed at my work. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, no, I'm, 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 yeah, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to be arrogant there, but um, we, we've done, we've done very interesting things with, 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 with some companies uh, and Spark. Uh, I wish I could talk a bit more about about what we did, but just very, very interesting use cases. Um, but, but it's really even, even when I'm looking at at companies I worked with, like three, four almost five years ago now i was i was surprised by the adoption of, of spark okay so that people were just very curious and and really wanted to 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 use it and, and experiment with it mm. so it, it was not something like a, hey this is this oddball tool uh we're, we're keeping in the drawer somewhere you know? <laughs> Uh, it, it it was really it was really interesting to see that people were doing all these kind of things and that people were seeing the the, the, the different benefits uh, of of that and, and it's really you know there, there's something there's something I, I, I stole from from a friend of mine um, who actually was nice enough to write the the forward of the book uh, Rob Thomas and uh, Rob is um, well you probably know him is. Um, General Manager. No, he's no, he's sorry. Now he's an SVP for uh, IBM AI and cloud, but pretty high up the food chain. Uh, I will be totally honest. I IBM has such a large reporting structure yeah. that I know almost nobody. I, I, I <laughs> I've heard of the CEO, and, well, and the president, and that's basically it. <laughs> so so when you look at the top, you see yeah, you see Darwin Krishna, Jim Weister, and and not far away as Rob Thomas. Um, and and so anyway, Rob Rob defined um, Spark as uh, as an operating system, um, and uh, uh, and this is kind of the intro of my talk. So if you're coming, I think this one is at three p.m. Um, so if you go there, I, I'll talk more about why. Um, but I, I find it really interesting because it opens when you think about Spark in this way, then it opens plenty of use cases. Basically, any data oriented use cases you, you you can do with it and it's just a, it's just a mind switching you can you you can think uh, hey i'm using spark to do my data science or i can use for data engineering but the thing is then you okay well you can say oh it's a framework but the thing is it's not even about it's a framework if you kind of start thinking that it's a beep operating system it's 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 actually yeah but i can do anything I want with an operating system, right? And, 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 and I think that's, that's, that's really how I like to define Spark. So in, that, that's, that's a really interesting perspective. Yeah, I think, I think, I think, well, I can, I can completely agree because if you disagree, I would say it's my idea, but I, I agree it's Rob's <laughs> idea. So, <laughs> so that's, I give, I give, I, I give credit to the guy for that for sure. But, but yeah, anyway, so, 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 and, and that's, that's when you, when you're starting this way, then yeah, you think a bit differently Then you, you, you see what you can do. And basically, you know, it's not like, oh, I know, I know Python's and I'm going to do everything in, with Python. It's more like a, when you're looking at, it, at that, you say, oh, I've got, I've got data problems or I've got, uh, but how can I solve them with Spark? And w is it worth doing it with Spark, or do I have to um, do I have to go um, do I have to go learn something else? Okay, uh, and in most of the most of the case, I I I I, I find the answer with with Spark. Um, some people say, oh, wh what do you think about Airflow or um, uh, or other tools? And the thing is, it's really, 
I think it's really great um, that there's all the tools, but as Spark is, is an operating system, you can plug it all the streams. So for example, Spark has streaming, okay? And it's pretty well done, the Spark streaming. But the thing is, yeah, but in streaming, I, I, I want to use Kafka. I said, okay, no problem. You use Kafka and you plug into Spark. And, and then you will, your APIs for streaming will be the, will be the Spark APIs, but using leveraging Kafka. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No problem. Okay. So, 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 so that's, so, so that's, that's where if, if you want to use something else, or if you feel like that Spark is not good enough in something, but yeah, maybe, but the, the, it gives you, it still gives you the same baseline for everything. And once you learn the API, the data frame API, uh, you, you use it in, in, in any kind of scenarios. Uh, the example we are going to work this afternoon is, is we, we start with, you know, basic ingestion of data, and then we go up to machine learning, all that in Java, using the same API, uh, using the, a very, not not that much code um, because it's it's not really greedy in in, in code. Um, you learn once the API and then you use it everywhere. So. Nice. Yeah, I, I used to work for a company. I don't know if you're familiar with them. It's a startup called PubNub, and they're kind of like a Kafka as a service uh, company doing publish subscribe streaming. Um, but I believe I believe that they were using Spark um, back when I was there also. Um, I'm kind of curious too. So Garish mentioned, you know, sort of coming into Spark. And by the way, if anybody else has questions, please feel free to post them in the Q&A or the chat. I'm just being uh, greedy and, and asking all of my questions right now. Go ahead. But, but I'm, I'm kind of curious. So, I mean, you talked about, you know, companies building Spark into their, into their products. You talked about uh, consulting, implementing Spark uh, on behalf of larger organizations. We talked about um, developers b becoming exposed to Spark. We talked about data scientists using Spark with their Jupyter notebooks. We talked about sort of like all these different groups of people or all these different professions using Spark for different applications. Um, are, are there any groups that you're su surprised that Spark, like the knowledge of Spark has, has reached them, whether it's executives or programmers or data scientists? What is surprising? What surprised me and constantly surprised me is uh, is how people are, are are using Spark in in different ways. Um, so the, when I when I joined um, Advanced Auto Parts, um, I, I found out that uh, we have a data science group. Okay, so. No, nothing surprising there and they 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 even had a we, we even have a spark club there and i said oh cool a spark club uh I, 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 and, and you know we sell auto parts but it was not a spark plug. it was not a, about <laughs> sparks for your engine okay it was really about, terrible terrible yeah, i'm shutting yeah. i'm shutting this zoom down <laughs> so okay uh but anyway so it was it was um we, we so I, I started talking with them and the thing is it, it seems like we're not even talking about the same tool. So, so you know, that was that was that was kind of the fun thing with with, with starting to work with them. Is you 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 guys are doing this with with Spark? But the thing is, it was so natural for them that Spark was there. Spark was established as as this fundam this foundation foundation tool, um, and then said, okay, well, I'm I'm doing Spark with these kind of things. But the thing is, okay. But the thing is, you know, it, it's, 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 uh, it's, um, it was, yeah, it was actually, it was actually funny um, to, to see, to see, the, like, you know, it's seeing, I think it's, it's a bit of the, you know, the, the thing, uh, like, uh, you put, you put, you blind, you put people in a, in a room where there's an elephant and uh, you turn off the light and they've got to describe and, and someone is touching the tail, someone is touching the horn and, and someone is touching the ears and they have a different description of the elephant in the room. Um, I, 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 I think I think it was, I, I just had this impression and uh, when, when talking with the data scientist, but Hadoop is the elephant. 
not spark. That's right. I was going to say. <laughs> let's, let's, let's put the thing straight here. <laughs> so I just, I wanted to, I think we have about 10 minutes left. I wanted to talk about some of the sessions that you're giving later today. So I see that you're giving, a, uh, or you're co-presenting uh, Advanced Auto Parts and Open Source at 2 p.m. ET. Does yes. that sound right? Yep. And so that, I, I believe right now it's about 11.30. So it's about two and a half hours from now. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I believe you have actually some more. Uh, yeah. Let me just look. So at 3 p.m. right after that, you have mm -hmm. Big Data Made Easy with uh, Spark 3. At 4 p.m., I guess your workshop continues. Yeah, um, it's a three-hour workshop this afternoon. Wow. Yep. Okay. So, so I, I, I'm, yeah, when Todd asks for things, you know, like, who's giving five talks today? Hmm? Who? <laughs> so, so I've just yeah. pasted the link to the workshop, uh, the link uh, on the schedule uh, in the chat here. So feel free to to reserve some time for that if you want to go more in depth. And will that be sort of like an interactive uh, coding, or will it be more lecture? I, 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 I will. I will try to make it interactive. Um, and, and I don't know how the technology will permit that. Um, so if you're interested in, in so so first for for the two p.m. the two p.m. one is as you may have understood I work for a company called uh, Advanced Auto Parts. Uh, it's a pretty well known company in the U.S. We have got something like uh, six thousand stores and uh, uh, more than seventy thousand employees. We headquarter in Raleigh, um, and uh, um, and we are in the middle of our you know, digital transformation. And, and and part of our digital transformation is we're doing things with open source and things that you may not expect. And some, and that's what we are going to talk about. So my boss is joining me. My, my boss is um, Adolfo Rodriguez and uh, Adolfo is the senior VP uh, of IT transformation. So, and so we will, we will, we will have a, we will have some fun with with them, and then uh, the less fun part of the talk is going to come back to me. So you you, you pick, uh, but uh, but I think it's going to be an interesting session about open source, and hint, it's going to be about Spark as well. And uh, after that, yeah, I've got I've got this workshop. So traditionally, I've been doing this workshop with with uh, all things open uh, for three years maybe um so it, it's every time it's new content different content um and, and it's really after after attending the after attending the workshop you should be good to go for um for to to, to use spark and java so yeah so uh, uh girish if you want to join this afternoon uh you you, you definitely can uh, it's going to be long i'm going to be probably completely fried tonight um <laughs> i could i could imagine because yeah. I mean, you've got this then you've got your other presentation then you've got the workshop yeah um and so i'm actually curious so i'm i'm, I'm gonna post one last time the link to the book giveaway so if you are interested in uh, getting an ebook or potentially even a signed physical copy of Spark in action, then there's a link in the chat. So feel free to to fill that out. But uh, I'm kind of curious. So you you published this book through Manning Publications. Did you work mm -hmm. with uh, Candice uh, Gilhuli or, or Mario? Yes, there? I did. Oh, yes. that's awesome. So yes. I actually worked with them a few years ago to put on a JavaScript conference right before Strange Loop in St. Louis. And, oh, okay. Uh, and I still talk with Candace every once in a while. She's she's like my spirit animal. We we'll, she's we'll, uh, she she's she's crazy. We're doing we're doing we're doing a few things. Um, yeah. So so oh, that's that's fine. So are you are you in St. Louis physically? Because these days I, we 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 don't know where we are. But I'm I'm in Chapel Hill. So I I'm in uh, San Francisco. Candace is in Canada. Yeah, um, Montreal. But, but she doesn't speak French. But but she, we're both from New York, and so we have the same personality. So we'll talk for ninety minutes. We'll get absolutely nothing done. But I, I love Manning. They have, uh, you know, such a great stable of authors. You know, yourself included. Thank you. No, I think I think I think I think uh, I think I think Manning is 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 really uh, a great a great publisher. I, I was I was really honored when they said yes uh, to 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 publish this book. Uh, it it was you know it's always kind of a 
O'Reilly versus versus uh, Manning a little bit, but I think that uh, um, Manning is is the editing process with with Manning is drastic. Okay, um, it's it's really um, they don't yeah it, it, yeah it's my tune, but I, I think I made a I made a a few jokes where they say, well, this is not this is not appropriate. <laughs> Come on, I'm French. If I cannot do my inappropriate jokes in my book, <laughs> so, 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 so. If you want to hear all the inappropriate jokes that were left out of the book, come to the session at yeah. 2 p.m. Eastern. <laughs> because but, uh, but, uh, Jean George has to get them out somehow. <laughs> I made a video. If you look on YouTube, you'll find it. There's, there's a video. I, 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 I list all of them and I. I kept them. So anyway, <laughs> but, uh, but, but no, it's, it's, it's a really, really serious publisher. I mean, if you, if you are, um, when you, when you want to learn something uh, and you want a book about the topic, I think that um, you've got, a, if you've got a choice between a Manning book or anyone else, go, go with Manning. Uh, and they're really sorrow and, you know, so, and, and it's almost, you know, it took three years to make the book, okay? So it doesn't mean that the content is three years old. It means that the content has been kind of being nurtured for three years. Um, but we we went, I had five or six different editors at different stage. Um, there, it's, it's a really, really super professional process. And the thing is, it doesn't leave much room for goofiness. Mm. So, so if you're, if you're thinking about when you're looking at a book and you see something, someone who's self-published, if it's someone who's self-published without an editor, and my wife is an editor as well. Um, but, uh, if you, if you, you you will you will be surprised and all I would say almost shocked by by the amount of work that the editors are, are putting into into the book in in making it sure that it's uh, palatable that it's understandable that if you reference somewhere at at some point then it needs to be you know described in some way that if you're um, that is the case is always the same that so there's a lot of there's a lot of work uh, being done there and it's really i think you learn a lot i think i i i learned an awful lot while working with with uh, with manning on writing a book and i think that that it's it's also pretty incredible how we translate towards our skills i think that now when i'm, I'm making a, a powerpoint presentation uh or when i'm doing document documents for work um uh, I think I think it, it increased the quality. So I'm not saying they are quality documents, but they are better than what I used to be doing before I wrote the book. So, so pretty pretty great experience. I would actually um, I would I would um, I would highly recommend going through this exercise if you if you've got something to write. So. Awesome. Well, so we just have a few more minutes. So I just want to throw it back out to any of the attendees if you have any questions about uh, Apache Spark or um, you know, data science in general, feel free to post them. I believe our next session is not going to be hosted by me. It's on the same Zoom link, uh, but it's actually going to be hosted by my colleague, Yolanda. Um, and that will be Lin Sun talking about uh, getting started with service meshes with Istio. Uh, so different, uh, different open source project, but uh, Hopefully there'll be some overlap as far as, uh, as far as the audience. Um, but it looks like, it looks like we're good on questions for now. So I think the last thing for me to do is just to thank you uh, for coming and presenting. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Spark in action. Hopefully everybody who applied using the link in the chat will get a free copy. Um, but if you, don't get a, if you don't get a free copy and, and you're very angry about it, take out your anger by buying a copy on Amazon so that John George can get a free uh, coffee. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Thank you so much for, uh, for, for hosting that. And uh, well, I guess we'll, we'll probably talk sometime soon. <laughs>